Welcome to Crime Scene X. Today's video will cover three scary boating horror stories. If you enjoy, please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe for daily scary story uploads. Enjoy. It was a crisp autumn afternoon when I set sail, alone, with fishing gear in tow. The plan was to spend the weekend casting lines and contemplating life in the quiet solitude of the open water. The lake had always been my sanctuary, far away from the complications of work and family. I motored out to a secluded spot known for good fishing and dropped anchor. The sun began its descent, casting long shadows over the water. As I set up my fishing gear, a subtle chill crept up my spine. I shrugged it off as the temperature dropping with the setting sun. I cast my line and settled in with a thermos of hot coffee. The water was calm, and for a while I lost myself in the simple joy of fishing as the sky darkened, however, the feeling returned, that unsettling sensation of being watched. I surveyed my surroundings, but saw no boats, no signs of human activity at all. I felt foolish but couldn't shake the unease. Hours passed with no luck on the fishing front, but also no further disturbances. I was about to call it a night when my fishing rod twitched, then bent sharply. A big one, I thought, grabbing the rod and bracing myself. After a few minutes of struggle, I reeled in my catch, a sizable fish. Proudly, I reached for my camera to take a photo of it. That's when I heard it, a faint but distinct noise coming from below deck. It sounded like breathing. I froze, listening intently. The sound was unmistakable, rhythmical but labored breathing. My mind raced through the possibilities. Was it an animal? Had someone stowed away on my boat? Summoning courage, I grabbed a flashlight and cautiously made my way below deck. My heart pounded in my chest as I descended the stairs. What I found left me dumbstruck. An older man, with disheveled hair and tattered clothing, hiding in a corner. He looked up, his eyes meeting mine, and then spoke in a raspy voice. I didn't think you'd ever come down here. The shock rendered me speechless. Who was this man? And what was he doing on my boat? Who are you? I finally managed. That's not important, he said, looking away. What's important is that you don't go back to shore. My mind raced. Was he dangerous? Mentally unstable? Before I could ask anything more, he continued. I had to get away. They're after me. If you go back now, they'll find both of us. I weighed my options. I couldn't overpower him. Not in the confined space below deck. I had to play along until I could find a way out of this. Okay, no shore. I said, feigning agreement. But I have to go back up to steer the boat, make sure we stay anchored. He nodded, and I made my way back to the main deck, locking the cabin behind me. My hands shaking, I grabbed my phone. No service, of course. My last option was the radio. I turned it on and tuned it to the emergency frequency. Mayday, Mayday. This is Charlie Alpha 369. I have an unauthorized person on board. Possible hostile intent. I am anchored approximately five miles south of Red Pine Marina. Over. I released the talk button, praying for a response. After a tense moment, the radio crackled to life. Charlie Alpha, 369, this is Marine Patrol. Stay put, we're on our way. Over. Relief washed over me, but it was short-lived. From below deck I heard the sound of shuffling, then a loud thud. Had he heard me? I gripped a fishing knife my eyes fixed on the cabin door. The minutes stretched on like hours until I finally saw the flashing lights of a patrol boat approaching. As they pulled alongside me, two officers boarded my boat, guns drawn. We'll take it from here, one said, moving cautiously towards the cabin. I unlocked the door and they descended, emerging moments later with the man in handcuffs. Asylum seeker, one of the officers explained, been evading capture for days. You're lucky you radioed it in could have turned into a dangerous situation. As they escorted him off my boat and onto their patrol boat, the man looked back at me one last time. His eyes no longer seemed threatening, but sad, as if burdened by a lifetime of hardship. The officers cast off, and I was alone again, left to ponder the night's unsettling events. My boat was empty, but the weight of the night's events hung heavy in the air. I reeled in my fishing gear and started the motor, ready to put as much distance as possible between me and the mysteries lurking in the depths, both of the lake and of the human soul.
The boat rocked gently on the lapping waves as I steered it further from shore. The sun hung low in the sky, casting an orange hue over the waters. As someone who had spent countless hours sailing, the ocean had always been a source of comfort and solitude for me. Today was no different, or so I thought. The forecast had promised clear skies and calm seas, but within hours the winds picked up. Clouds amassed on the horizon like a gathering army, and I realized a storm was brewing faster than I had anticipated. I turned the boat around, attempting to head back to port. My GPS flickered, losing its signal intermittently. Just what I need, I muttered, mentally calculating the distance and direction back to the marina. The boat lurched suddenly, jolted by a powerful wave. I gripped the wheel tightly, trying to stabilize it, but the winds had become merciless, pushing me further out to sea. Rain began to pour, each droplet stinging my skin as it hit. Frantic, I radioed for help. Mayday, Mayday! This is the Sea Spirit. I am approximately ten nautical miles west of the Harbor Point Marina. Over. Static filled the airwaves for what felt like an eternity before a crackling voice responded. Sea Spirit, this is Coast Guard. We're tracking a storm system moving rapidly in your direction. We can't get to you immediately. Hang tight. Over. As the sky darkened, the waves grew higher and more turbulent. Then a loud crack resonated over the howling wind. My heart sank as I realized the mast had snapped. The boat was now adrift, at the mercy of the storm. I donned my life jacket, securing it tightly. Bracing myself against the boat's cabin, I felt utterly helpless. With the mast broken and the GPS unreliable, I had no way to steer myself back to safety. In the middle of my despair, I heard a thud. My heart skipped a beat as I turned around to find a cargo container floating beside my boat, likely fallen off a freighter. It was a massive, blunt object tossed around by the violent sea, and it had my small boat on a collision course. I grabbed the flare gun, shot a flare skyward, hoping against hope that someone would see it. Then bracing for impact, I climbed into the small emergency life raft stored on board. Just as I cut it loose from the boat, a monstrous wave lifted the cargo container and slammed it into my boat, splintering it into pieces. I was thrown into the water, my life raft capsizing upon impact. Gasping for air, I surfaced and wrestled to turn the raft upright. Once inside, I activated its emergency beacon, praying for swift rescue. Hours seemed to stretch into days. I was cold, wet, and exhausted. My beacon blinked, sending its distress signal into the void. When I finally heard the sound of helicopter blades cutting through the air, I couldn't believe it. A Coast Guard helicopter appeared through the storm, a basket descending through the torrential rain. As I was lifted into the helicopter, I looked down at the tumultuous sea below, my heart pounding with the adrenaline of the near-death experience. I had faced the ocean's unforgiving power, armed only with my wits and a glimmer of hope. But it was enough. And as we flew back to shore, the storm below seemed to ease, as if the ocean had made its point, proving that it could be both friend and foe, savior and destroyer. From that day on, I no longer saw the sea as just a sanctuary, it was also a formidable force, demanding respect. While it could be tame and beautiful, it could turn perilous in an instant, showing that sometimes the real horror is the unpredictability of nature itself. And that is something I will never forget. I had always found solace on the open ocean, its vastness, its mystery. That's why I took my sailboat, the Sea Whisperer, out for extended journeys venturing beyond the coastal shallows into deeper, less charted waters. But on that fateful day, as the skies darkened and the once calm waters churned into frenzied swells, I knew I had made a grave mistake. It started with the wind, a howling monster that emerged out of nowhere, followed by waves that grew increasingly taller and more menacing. Despite my years of sailing experience, I found myself struggling to maintain control of the boat. My sails were torn to shreds by the wind's cruel fingers, and soon, I was at the mercy of the sea's increasingly violent mood swings. The boat capsized. I found myself submerged, disoriented, and fighting for air. I finally surfaced, gasping, and found a piece of flotsam to cling to, a broken section of the mast. The sea whisperer was sinking fast, disappearing into the depths below. As I floated there, my mind began to assess the grim situation. I was miles away from any land, lost in the middle of the ocean. My radio and navigation equipment were gone, 
claimed by the sea along with my boat. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, I saw them. Fins. First one, then another, then another, slowly circling around me. Sharks. A surge of fear gripped me. I knew I was in their territory now, a piece of driftwood in a sea full of predators. With each pass they came closer, their dark eyes sizing me up, deciding whether or not I was worth the effort. Hours seemed like an eternity as I clung to the mast, praying for rescue but fearing the worst. The sharks continued to circle, never straying too far, as if to remind me that my life hung in the balance. Then, just as I felt myself losing hope, I heard it. A distant thumping sound that grew louder with each passing second. A helicopter. Waving frantically, I let out a scream, willing them to see me, to pluck me from this watery hell. The helicopter circled overhead, then hovered directly above me. A rescue diver was lowered down, and within moments I was hoisted up and away from the jaws that had circled below. As we flew back toward land, I couldn't help but reflect on the fragility of life and the razor-thin margin that separates survival from disaster. I knew I had been given a second chance, and I vowed never to take it, or the ocean, for granted again. Back on solid ground, I embraced my rescuers, my feet touching earth but my heart still pounding from the near-death experience. The ocean had humbled me, and the sharks had reminded me of my own mortality. But it was the bravery of my rescuers that renewed my faith in humanity, showing me that even in our darkest hours, Hope can come soaring over the horizon, lifting us from the depths of despair and setting us back on the path to redemption. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video, comment what you thought, and subscribe for daily uploads.